Honorable members of the Society of Fellows, outgoing and incoming members of the board, members of the Philippine Institute of Supply Management. Magandang hapot po sa inyong lahat. Uh, alam niyo po, uh, excited na excited ako nung nakikinig ako kay Ricky dun sa mga ng konting making profile tungkol sa organization niyo. At nung naintindihan ko po, ah, supply management. Sabi ko, sayang. Sabi niyo, bakit? Sabi ko, bakit kayo-kayo lang? Dapat nagre-relate kayo, nagko-connect kayo with the pro uh, government procurement practitioners. Because I think one way of, uh, alam, alam niyo naman, ang passion ko talaga, gobyerno lang. Ano? One way of really reaching out uh, is really working with those inside government who are really holding the affairs of the, society, of the country. Okay? Well, of course, uh, for me, it's always exciting to work with people who work in supply management. If you're in government, you will be the most sought after. Diba? Meron pong piruan dyan eh. Pag daw po, doon daw po sa mga nightclub, meron lang daw mong iilang incidents na yung mga babae ay tumatayo at nagmamadaling magbukas ng pintuan. Dalawang professions lang daw. Either the engineer or the supply officer. No? Diba? <laughs> nagmamadali daw silang magbukas ng pinto. Kaya lang medyo nalulungkot din po ako. Kasi nung pagpasok po, well, apan Upon entering the hall, I look at your, I look at the, your, uh, the signage outside. How do you call this one? The, the, uh, the mission and vision, like that. And I said, buti pa sila masyadong organized. And also, I, I, I saw their social responsibility, ethical leadership, or whatever, something like that. And I said, I felt like parang medyo malayo yung counterpart niya sa government. And I felt so sad, no? I felt so sad. Sabi ko parang ang layo. How I wish I have the same room with the, uh, with the same group of people working on supply management, but this time on the government. And I hope that the supply people in government will be the one talking about their own mission and vision and talking about their own activities and talking about their own programs. Sadly. Inside government, supply people talk about contracts, kickbacks, bribes, and how do we facilitate things. Kaya nga meron tayong tongpats, meron tayong porsyento, at kung ano-ano pa, no? So it makes me a bit sad. Now, um, I, I started in COA in 1984, resigned in 2006. I never thought that I'm going back to government again. When I resigned in 2006, I thought that was the end of a public career. At itinapong ko lahat ng working paper ko with the thought that I will never work again in the area of governance and fighting corruption. Pero siguro talaga hong may mga taong ipinanganap na kambal ang ganitong kapalaran. So, noong 2006 po, ay nag-resign po ako dahil nga ho, uh, I wanted to pursue the case. Uh, State Auditor 5 po ako noon. I rose from the rank. I started as auditing aide. It was very, very ano, ano, interesting to find out. When you are, ano, galing po ako sa probinsya eh. I'm from the Quezon, from Tayabas, Quezon. So, you know, in the province, prati sasabihin ng nanay mo, anak, mag-accounting ka? Kasi maraming, malaki ang pera dyan, no? ano, malaki ang kita ng mga accountant, di ba? So, talagang pinagkahirap-hirapan mong mapaaral ka ng accounting at pagkatapos nag-review pa kami. And during our review, you know, uh, iinom pa kami ng katibit, yung gamot, para wag kang makatulog. Para lang wag magsara yung mga mata namin so I can finish the, ano, ano, the reading materials. And upon passing the board, ako pala yung pupunta lang sa gobyerno, di ba? <laughs> but I have naman a choice. I, ha I have a choice. Eh, siguro talaga hong true love ako sa government. And my father, he feels like there's no public service as in government service. So, I joined the government na. I was so surprised, sabi ko, Diyos ko, matapos ko mag-aral ng apat na taon at mag-review ng mahabang anim na buwan, sunugin ang kilay ko dito, ako pala ay tatanggap na tumataginting na anim na raang piso isang buwan. <laughs> 700 pala, 700 at 600. And so, you know, it's 700 pesos a month. I couldn't, I couldn't forget that. Because hindi pa ko kasha sa pambahid ng board and lodging ko at saka sa aking pamasahe. Because my first audit assignment is Philippine Tourism Authority. 
And I am, I am residing in Fairview, 11 pesos yung one way na pamasay from, from Fairview to, to Kalao. So you could just imagine, kulang yung 700 pesos, including the board. And I, but you know what is most interesting is that kahit 700 pesos lang yung sweldo mo, magaan na magaan ang iyong puso. Punong-puno, you're full with, you're filled with contentment because you know you're doing a lot. Hindi naman alam ng mga ino-audit namin na 700 pesos lang buwan-buwan ang aming sinasahod. And we're already talking with managers, you know, and with presidents of corporation. And I hope it doesn't show with our face and with the way we carry ourselves that we're only being paid 700 pesos. But I think the moral of the story is that I have never felt like I'm in need because I'm always happy with what I'm doing. Until nakita po natin, Siyempre, yung ginagalawan mong uh, sistema, maraming pagkukulang, as I've said, ano? Kung ano yung pagkukulang na yun, yung nasa loob din ang nakakaalam. The practitioners are the ones who knows exactly what are the ills and uh, weaknesses of the system. And they are also the ones who know how to correct it. And yet, they never do it, right? Because they're profiting from it. They're, they're taking some comforts out of it. So I learned to live that kind of life until after I searched my soul and I said, something must be wrong. There must be another perspective of audit. There must be another reason why audit should be conducted. So I said, if audit is just for purposes of compliance with laws, rules, and regulations, then simply lang, wala siguro makukulong <laughs> dahil lahat nagagawa ng paraan para maging allegedly in accordance with laws, rules, and regulations. But you know that there is a bigger side for it. And I think that ito siguro ko yung nag-push sa akin to what I did. I started the audit of the Armed Forces of the Philippines in 2004. Talaga hong hindi ako para dito. I was then assigned at the office of the President, the Presidential Chief of Staff, doing some lifestyle check. Oh, di ba? Kami yung unang nagsimula ng lifestyle check against the uh, Bureau of Internal Revenue Personnel, the Bureau of um, Customs, and the Department of Public Works and Highways. No? Marami nang ayaw tumingin sa akin. <laughs> okay. So that's it. I was with then uh, Presidential Chief of Staff Rigoberto Tiglao. And then somebody called me, sabi sa akin, Heights, kailangan mo bumalik ng COA because the Office of the Ombudsman will be conducting an audit of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Hindi ko po makalimutan yung sinabi sa akin ni eh, Ombudsman Marcelo. No? Heidi, sabi niya, we will make history. Ay? history nga. Hindi <laughs> ko naman po sinasadya. Kaya ho ina-accuse ako ng ambisyosa. Pinagandaan ko daw po itong posisyon na ito. Limang taong ako pa, ano, na nakaraan. And so we did the start, we did start the audit. And you know, you will be very, very excited if you are part of the audit. Because majority of the source of the are supply contracts, right? There are several supply contracts. You know, it's very interesting. Supply contracts in the government as the mo, uh, will give you a lot of fun stories and a lot of lessons, actually. There is one supply contract for the supply of um, firearms. When we inspection po kami ng warehouse, <laughs> nandun pa yung firearms. Sabi ko, dami nito ha. Ano yung ginagawa dito? Mami, hindi po natin pwedeng gamitin. Ay, bakit po? Kasi po hindi po fit dun sa bala na minamanufacture natin sa bala. <laughs> Sana hindi ko nangyayari sa inyo ito, ano? <laughs> Mawawala ko yung paghanga ko sa inyo kung meron kayong ganito. You know, it, it, it's so painful and I couldn't imagine bakit tayo bumibili ng firearms na hindi naman pala bagay yung bala na ginagawa natin, no? Uh, isa lang po yan. Pangalwa, pag tumigin ka sa mga intelligence and confidential funds, which is the topic this morning at Senate before I run, I run here to your affair, they will always be saying, oh, we need, uh, in order to promote uh, peace and order in our place, barangay ek ek etc. in a faraway land of Tralala, we will require the purchase of a cellular phone. Yung pinaka high-tech na cellular phone. Sige, bilihan sila, high-tech, meron pang ano ba tawag dito. Yun po ang tanong, nung maalaman-laman. Pag tingin namin sa inspeksyon, nakabox, bakit po? Ay, wala pa pong signal. <laughs> So, you know, there are really certain uh, supply contracts and it's, shall we say, it's embarrassing or it's, or it's painful that there are contracts being entered into without the interest of the government in mind. 
And I think this is the topic for today. And if I may just share with you, personally, I think there are two essential but invisible elements of governance. And these are just my personal alone. It's not within the book. This is based on my experience. One, of course, is citizenship. And I couldn't help but discuss governance with citizenship. I think each of us in the room should never forget that we are first citizens before we become procurement practitioners. For the auditors, I'm always telling them, you are first a citizen before you become an auditor. So that means to say, once you are given an office order to conduct an audit of a certain local government, you're not doing so in compliance to an assignment order. You're doing so because you are a stakeholder, you being a citizen first before an auditor. And so I think my message is plain and simple. That let me just remind you that we are all citizens of this country and we are all Unfortunately or fortunately, we only have one country. Kahit po tayo magpabalik-balik abroad, we're all going back. Now, um, as citizens, dapat nakikita natin na yung pangakailangan natin, hindi lang nagtatapos sa sarili nating pamilya. Yung ating pangakailangan ay should go beyond the needs of the family. And I think this is my passion. You know how I was reared up by my father? My father is a policeman doon po sa bayan ng Tayabas. At lagi ko po kikwento, pag binibigyan po kami ng bawad, although hindi ko po ito na-realize nung buhay pa siya, nung patay na sa ako na alala, hindi ko kami inaabutan ng bawad na i-handle sa'yo. Hindi po ganun. Pupunta ka po dun sa room, sa room niya. And then since na ano lang naman kami, meron pong isang lata doon, meron pong lata, there's a can full of coins, and all you have to do is to pick up your share. Ang tanong ko po, there are lots of coins in that can. But I was never tempted to get more than my share. And now, if I can recall, I said, bakit kaya hindi ko sinobrahan yung coins ko? Or bakit hindi ko sinobrahan yung dapat kukuhan yun? It is because of the realization that if I will get something in excess of my share, a brother or a sister will be deprived of a meal. Sana ho, kung ganito rin ang tingin natin, at malalaman natin, we are reminded that we are all citizens, and we are all stakeholders in this country, then that means na kung ano po yung kinukuha natin is an extension of ano rin ang pangangailangan ng nasa kabilang line. So you are supply managers, and you know very well, syempre you are indeed holding some power. I know very well that the suppliers will be running after you. And I will not be surprised. I know that there will be instances that you will be dealing with government. And I hope that this time when you deal with government, you can see the government as a conglomeration or as a, or as a consolidation of all the needs of all its citizens. So that kung makita po natin na gusto po natin magkaroon ng profit, makita rin natin na mas marami pang iba na nangangailangan din ng pagparap din naman sa kanilang sarili. O sana ngayon, nandiyan ka pa rin, rin ang ginagawa mo, wala pa rin nagbabago. <laughs> and she was just surprised. And I told her, you know, Anna, when I started the audit of Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao, I was pregnant with her. And I got the conviction of the regional governor as affirmed by the Supreme Court when she was already 16 years old. This is exactly the case that we have right now. But the reason is, but the question rather is, should we, should we indeed lose hope, the Huba? Then who says some meeting namin sa Association of Major uh, Superior Religious Organization, uh, tinanong po ako, how is governance right now? Is there something happening in anti-corruption? Sabi ko, alam niyo po, kahit na pa ang alam ko na lahat dito nagdududa, <laughs> lahat dito nagtatanong, wala, wala naman nangyayari, di ba? I said, I would like to be selfish this time. I would like to believe meron at sana po meron you know why because it is difficult to stay inside it is difficult to stay inside it is difficult to stay inside and be hopeless you know before i entered i go back to government i was already working with asian development bank hindi ko po pinagkakaila it is my dream nung ako po'y bata pa 
Pero hindi ko po akalain na when I was already there, eh nagsawa na rin po ako sa buhay ko at sinabi ko, I should go back to government. And exactly, binigay po ng Diyos sa akin ko ano yung gusto ko. So in 2010 na po, nabalitaan ko po yung plea bargain, at hindi po ako nakatulog. Sabi ko, grabe naman to, matapos kong isubmit yung report, matapos kong uh, mag-appear sa mga hearing sa Sandigan Bayan, even if I'm no longer an auditor, ay eh bigla sila mag -e enter into a plea bargain. You know, I just wanted to share the experience, if only to share with you how I bank on with my being a citizen and at the same time trying to reach out for a deeper level of spirituality so I can give something more for the country. It was the most difficult period because I have just joined formally as a, per, as a fixed term employee of the Asian Development Bank before consultant lang po ako. Pero August 2010, nag fixed term employee po ako. Remember, December 2010, magre-resign ako. And I have to tell my children, anak, isosoli na natin yung ating ID. <laughs> At ang aking mong asawa, nagkakwento pa sa akin, ay, hindi pa ako nakakapagpalaysan ng mata. Ano pa ito? <laughs> but it was most difficult. I know exactly I could not talk if I would not resign. But resigning is not a better or an easy alternative. You know why? Because even after 22 years in government, I wasn't able to build a house or to buy a house. O diba? Nakabili lang ako ng bahay August 2010. So nakapag-file ako ng bank loan. And yet, December 2010, magre-resign ako. And I'm already 48 years old. That means to say, wala nang kukuha sa akin sa trabaho. It was most difficult. So kinilangan ko ho, magdasal ng gusto for the sake of sanity. And in my prayer, nagkaroon po ako ng re-bargain. Lord, sana ho. Papatanunin mo po ako sa loto. Alam ko po ba na ako pala ay magiging witness kanina, di ba? Doon sa kanilang loto at marami pang iba. Ang aking pong deal, pag nanalo po ako sa loto, papayag po ako, ibibigay ko po yung report sa Senado pagkatapos dilipad kami ng mga anak ko together with my family. That's not selfish, right? That's practical. That's reasonable for every mom, right? So I said, I'll give the report. I'll bring my own, uh, all my children and we will fly to the U.S., no? Araw-araw po ako nagsisimba at bawat readings po ay aking tinatandaan. Yun po ang aking itinataya. So pag sinabi po Mark chapter 5, verse 8 to 13, ay talaga po namang isusulat ko at tatayaan ko po. 5, 8, 13, irarambol ko pa po yun. 8 plus 5, 13 plus 13, 26, and 5 plus 8, yeah, whatever, no? Awa po ng Diyos. Buong Disyembre, magkakalagit na ano ng Disyembre, hindi pa rin po ako nanalo. That was the 700 million ano, na, na, na draw to draw. So, nung hindi pa po ako na nanalo, na-realize ko, teka, kahit po yung scratch it, pinatulang ko, no, yung 50 pesos, talaga hopeless ako manalo, no? die hard ako na mananalo ako. Nung hindi na po ako nanalo, na-realize ko po na mukhang libo-libo na rin ang ginagastos na katataya ko sa loto. Sabi ko po, ah, siguro, I have to accept Hindi pwedeng pangarap ng malinis na pamahalaan na wala kang iaambat. And then and then I said, Okay Lord, I agree. But then do not give me any 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 more time, any split ano, because pag binigyan mo pa ako ng kahit konting panahon na mag-isip, hindi na ako papayan. So ang ginawa ko po, nag-type na ako ng resignation ko, December 21. Pampasko ano? <laughs> And saka po ako umuwi sa bahay. Saka ako po kinausap yung asawa ko at sinabi ko, I resign. You know, many of you, men, there are many men in this room. How would you feel? Diba? Parehas ba kayo ng feeling ng asawa ko? Ang hirap sa'yo, matigas ang ulo mo eh. Sino ba ang nagpapantalon, diba? <laughs> so talagang isusumpa niyo yung babaeng katulad ko na wala na daw po akong ginawa kundi mag-isip tungkol sa katiwalian at maghanap ng paraan kung paano ito labanan. Mula umaga hanggang gabi, yun daw ang aming pinag-uusapan. Kaya talagang panis na panis na daw siya sa akin pag ako ang kaharap niya. And then this time, nag-resign pa, ano? And he kept on telling me, Hi, you know, there are three kids, there are three lives na nasa gitna natin. And you just fail to think about them. Hindi naman po ako makasalita dahil alam ko kung ako'y may kasalanan. Until after, siguro, kailangan, 
humahanap ka ng buwelo, ganun ang strategy ng mga misis, di ba? Huwag kang pahuhuli na talo ka. Kailangan hahanap ka ng counter strategy. You'll find out what is the weakness of your husband. And, di ba? Para supply management din yan eh. What is the weakest link? And whichever is the weakest link, you attack the weakest link, right? That's a, that's a good strategy. So I said, Roy, in, in the early 80s, you left your family, right? Oo. Oh. Eh kasi naman lahat ng kabataan nung namundo. O oh, kaya nga eh. Di ba yung nanay mo, umiiyak, hinahanap ka, tumigil ka sa pag-aaral? Oo oh, naman. Sabi ko, oh karma mo ako. Ako yung karma mo. <laughs> And he was all the more angry. And sabi niya, anong karma? Karma ka dyan. Karma ka lang. Eh nun, single ako. Ngayon, we are married. We are a family and there are three kids. And I told them, pero you're only, you're only thinking of the three kids. What about the more than 90 million Filipinos who deserve to know? Pero hindi ko pa rin muna bola, talagang hindi ako kinakausap. <laughs> And so, ano lang mo, kunyari, nagbalit-balitan ka kasi may kasalanan ka, konting luto, konting hugas ng plato, para kunyari masipag sa bahay. So, after some few months, ah, hindi, after some few days, lumabas na po si George Rabusa. Nung nanonood na po yung anak ko kay George, sabi po nila, ang nakakatouch naman. May sakit siya, pero tumutulong siya sa bayan. Tapos sabi ko, bakit anak? Ang nanay niyo, hindi. <laughs> sabi po niya, hindi ko nakasalita yung anak ko. Tapos, doon po nagsalita yung husband ko. Sabi po niya, you know, not everyone is given the chance to tell their truth. In fact, marami, bago makapagsalita ng kanilang katotohanan, ay nawala ng buhay. Your mom must be lucky. She's not only given the chance to tell the truth, but also, she's given the timeline. Di ko ba, hinahabol ako ng GMA7, ABS-CBN, at ang lahat-lahat na kasama na ang tiktik. Di ko ba? So, so, in that case, I was surprised because my husband told my children, from now on, we will go to the Congress and the Senate, and this is now my family decision. Nobody will pay mom. Nobody will say that this is because of what you did. Akala ko po yun yun. Sometimes in supply management, you look at it, you, 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 you sit a bit and then try to relax and then you find out, okay na ba to? Is the systems working? Parang ganun na. And then you get the, the assurance na mukhang okay na until after you have it running, biglang makikita mo, uy, may breakdown pala. Ganun din po ang nangyari sa buhay namin. Marami pong threats, marami pressures and I have to be separated from my family. And in the midst of the separation, ang hirap. Kasi yung anak mo, kahiwalay mo, yung asawa mo, kahiwalay mo rin. And you couldn't get in touch with them by text kasi sinasabi, madali daw matrace, and I have to cut my messages because it's dawning on my children. And I think it is then that it, gusto ko nalang bumalik sa kongreso at sabihin ko, hello, your honor, nagsinungaling po ako. <laughs> kasi po napakahirap. And then and then I realized, sabi ko, ano ba yung hindi mo kaya ibigay bilang isang nanay? Palagay ko, mas mahirap po sigurong ibigay. Mas madaling maintindihan kung nanay ka na kaya mo ibigay yung buhay mo for the sake of your children. I think no one will argue with me in this room, di ba? Lahat ng mami dito, when it comes to your children, ibibigay mo lahat, di ba? Sabi po sa commercial, di ba? Uh, okay, gagawin mo yung lahat. And I think fighting corruption is like that. Good governance is like that. Ang paglaban sa katiwalian ay katulad ng pagiging isang ina. Walang pwedeng mapagod, walang pwedeng magpahinga. And this is exactly the lesson that I am learning by this time. Yesterday, I was, at, I was in the Senate at 8 o'clock. After the hearing, I have to go back to the office. I left the office at 8 and reached the home at 10 o'clock only to attend to a lot of emails and a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, private messages. And this is how exactly we're running the government right now. What is the message? I am not exactly dreaming that I will be able to solve all types of corruption. It is impossible. In fact, I am even saying fighting corruption is not humanly possible. You know why? Because there are no incentives. There are no incentives. On the other hand, there are lots of sources, lots of sources to get hopeless, to be hopeless, right? Before I entered the government, 
meron pa po akong mga ilang property na napunda out of my consultancy. Kinikwento ko nga kay Vicky kasi nalungkot ako, nakita ko yung taga-ayala lang. Naalala ko po ang mga panahon na nag-i-invest ka sa mga pre-selling na units, di ba? You know, it was indeed very sad that I have to return some of them because I don't know if I can continue the amortization because I am only getting 56,000 a month. And if my previous amortization is 75,000 a month, Definitely, there will be nothing left for food and nothing left for my own maintenance, right? So I have to give up the unit that I got. And actually, the unit was just turned over to me by Serendra last December 10. I have to give it, I have to give it back before I enter the government. Before I have two cars, now I only have one car because I couldn't shoulder the cost of the uh, gasoline, no? I'm not appealing for financial aid or whatever. <laughs> what I'm telling is as simple as there is no incentive. That's one. Second, when you find corruption, you're always susceptible. People are always saying, oh, kanya kaya siya talaga kalinis? Ano kaya ang intention niya? And they will always be having this joke. You know what's the difference between Hyde and Co and Hyde and Mendoza? <laughs> Hayden Ko has a hidden camera. Hayden pala, no? Hayden Ko has a hidden camera. Heidi Mendoza daw has a hidden agenda. O, oh, diba? And it's painful. It's painful because you're, you're working to the max. You have sold some of your properties. You enter very poor. And yet, despite all this, people are looking for your agenda. But then, of course, I believe that we need afflictions in order to sustain our virtues. And when we continue to exercise our virtue, I think we will be hopeful and there will be no place for hopelessness because the Lord has poured out His words into our hearts. When the plea bargain was approved, ang daming tumatawag sa akin, Commissioner, ano pong masasabi mo? Nasayang po ang iyong pinaghirapan. Meron pa pong sinabi, ay dapat, Tumakbo ka na ng hubot-hubad dahil sinabi mo yan na pag, na pag nakawala si Garcia, ay tatakbo ka ng hubot-hubad doon sa Welcome Rotonda, as sa, sa Welcome sa Quezon City. Deep inside, people are asking, why is she the only one who remains to be hopeful? Because I said, I need to, if only I wanted to. I need to because I wanted to stay. I need to, if only to uplift all those hope of all those people around. I've been telling Vicky a while ago, ano ang ginagawa ko sa gabi? Ang ginagawa ko po sa gabi, nagtitiis po ako makipag-private message sa mga OFW. Tinatawanan po ako ng anak ko. Sabi po nung isa, Hi, ma'am. Hello. Sabi ko naman, Hi, kumusta? Pero pagod na pa na ako noon, then ang klakna. Naligo ka na po. Ano ba ito? Oo. And then, ang kasunod po, alam mo ma'am, mula po nang naka, nakinig ko yung story nyo, nag-enroll na po ako ng accounting at uuwi na po ako sa bansa natin sapagkat palagay ko may pag-asa na. My daughter is always telling me, Ma, why are you wasting your time over this? And I said, ano ka mo, for all their sacrifices, leaving their own families, going to a strange land, at least may balik ko lang yung feeling na may hope silang uuwi sa bansa nila, maligaya na ako. Kagabi, may kausap naman ako, taga Paris naman, di ba? Pari, sabi niya, sana ho, komisyoner, pag napagod kayo, limipad kayo dito para makapagbakasyon kayo, I'll take care of you. Sabi ko po, baka po conflict of interest niya, may impeach na po ako. So what I'm saying is, is it possible to fight corruption? I think it is. And so we must start. We must start, and this means let us realize that fighting corruption is not the sole responsibility of the government. Rather, it is the responsibility of every citizen. Kaya nga po ako nagsimula talking with governance and uh, citizenship. You are working on supply and chain management. Siguro po hindi problema sa inyo kung paano ba mag ng pera because it's always part of your ano. Parating yung sasabihin, ang daming trabaho. Yes, marami. But you know, you should be very, very happy. You know why? 
di for, kasi ho, maraming trabaho, marami rin naman pong iuwing sweldo. Sa amin po, saan ka teba yung trabaho, hindi po nawawala. Pero, ganun din po yung sweldo. Pero hindi po kami nagre-reklamo. What I'm really working at is the possibility of trying to uplift the spirit of public servant and convincing them that indeed it is possible to stay honest even in the midst of corruption. And so far, nakatatlong buwan na po, awa ng Diyos, lahat po ng pagkain na pinadadala, lahat ng regalo, pinapabalik po natin, we're changing the rules of the game. But you know, iba rin po talaga yung kultura. Whenever I'm, I'm invited to give a talk to a certain place, pupunta po ako doon. Pag nabalitaan po ng mga tao na pupunta ako, they will book a hotel for me, they will, they will try to, to arrange uh, a car which will pick me up, and they will all be surprised when I say, let me take care of how will I go there and where will I sleep. Ang hirap ding i-reverse ng tradition. Because the tradition is, who has the power is the ano, magnet of attraction, di ba? Kaya lahat, kulag na lang. Pag pumunta ka sa lugar, may magdadala ng bag mo, may magpubukas ng pintuan, but we're trying to reverse this. This afternoon, I tried to squeeze in this important affair because I consider each one of you in the room as equally important as my task back in the office because I'm looking at partnership. I'm looking at a potential partnership where people in the private sector working on supply management will have at the top of their heads the interests of the citizens before the interests of the company. I hope this is possible. Thank you very much for the announcement.